If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause this video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We need to review the basic concepts surrounding electric field produced by charged objects, particularly the direction of an electric field produced by a charged object. Now, we know that if we had a positive charge, then the electric field produced by that positive charge would point away from the positive charge. And then on the other hand, if we had a negative charge, then the electric field will point towards the negative charge. With those ideas in mind, let's consider the three regions in this picture. We have the region that lies to the left of the sheet, we have the region that's between the sheet and the particle, and then we have the region that lies to the right of the particle. If we go between the particle and the sheet, we would have two electric fields, one produced by the positive charge and one produced by the negatively charged sheet. As noted, the positive charge would produce an electric field that points away from the positive charge, so it would be pointing to the left here. And then the negatively charged sheet would be producing an electric field that points towards the negative charge, which would also be pointing to the left, as long as we are between the sheet and the charge. Now certainly if we have two electric field vectors that are both pointing to the left, they will not cancel out, and we will not be able to have an electric field equal to zero in this region. So in other words, between the sheet and the particle, the net electric field cannot equal zero. So we should not be looking for any space between these two objects. Let's consider the space on the right side of the charged particle. So the positive charge would be producing an electric field pointing away from it, and that would be to the right. And then the negatively charged sheet would be pointing electric field towards it, which would be pointing to the left. And so those two vectors, because they point in opposite directions, could cancel each other out. And so it is possible for the net electric field to equal zero on the right side of the charged particle. Same story on the left side of the sheet. We have the sheet producing an electric field pointing towards it, the positive particle producing an electric field pointing away from it. Those could cancel each other out, and so we could get a net electric field equal to zero. Now that we have those ideas in mind, we're going to be able to actually calculate a specific location at which the net electric fields will equal zero. And to do that, we review the electric field produced by a sheet of charge and then the electric field produced by a point charge. These are the equations that are presented in this chapter or perhaps an earlier chapter. The sheet equation comes from Gauss's law, and then this equation gives the electric field produced by a point charge. Recall that we want these two electric field magnitudes to be equal to each other. Their directions are opposite because one points to the right and the other points to the left, but the magnitudes should be the same. So we're going to go ahead and set the magnitude of the electric field that's produced by the sheet equal to the magnitude of the electric field produced by the charged particle. Now what we really want to solve for is r in this equation because r represents the distance from the charged particle capital Q. And as we noted, that distance will be somewhere on the right side of Q. So let's try to solve this equation for R. We can do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by R squared, so that the R squared cancels on the right-hand side. We could then multiply both sides by 2 times epsilon. And then we can put the 2 epsilon in the numerator on the other side. This way, the 2 epsilon cancels on the left side. And then finally, we will divide both sides by the magnitude of that surface charge density. That's going to put it in the denominator on the right-hand side of the equation. We have r squared. Why don't we go ahead and take the square root so that we can solve for r. And what's nice is that a factor of epsilon will actually cancel out. And that's going to simplify the equation for this distance r that we're trying to calculate just a little bit. At this point, we can go ahead and plug in the known values. Uppercase Q was given to us in microcoulombs. Let's be sure that we convert that into the standard unit of coulombs, however, by multiplying that charge by 10 to the minus 6. So that puts it in the standard unit. On the denominator, we have 4 pi times the magnitude of this uniform surface charge density, whose value is negative 2, but of course, because it's going to be in the absolute values, we're going to end up making it positive to represent the magnitude. That's also given in microcoulombs per meter squared. So let's do times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs per meter squared. And then we want to close off that absolute value, pick up our calculator, and carefully work this out. 
And when we do that, we should get a value of 0.691 approximately, and that'll come out in meters. But let's recall that when we take the square root, we actually get both a positive and a negative answer. And so let's try to interpret those positive and negative answers by referring back to the diagram. So this charge is located at the origin. We just determined a positive distance of 0.691 meters. So that would mean that we would have to measure out a distance along the positive x-axis, maybe roughly right there. And that is at 0.691 meters. And so at that point right there, the net electric field would indeed equal zero. But then we also have a distance of negative 0.691. Now note that D was 0.2 meters. So 0.691 is going to go beyond that distance of 0.2 meters. This is definitely not to scale. But since we're traveling a distance or moving a distance of 0.691 meters, we're going to have to certainly go past the 0.2 meter mark. So back here would be another point at which the net electric field is equal to zero. And the coordinate of that point was negative 0.691 meters. So for part A, the positive answer will be 0.691. And for part B, the negative answer will be negative 0.691. And then for part C, we don't have to do any new calculation. We just have to consider that D has a new value of 0.8. So this distance is now 0.8. We calculated distances of positive and negative 0.691. So if we went out positive 0.691, we would again have a point at which the net electric field is 0. But if we went backwards negative 0.691, this time we're going to end up right about here. And the reason for that is because D is now 0.8. So we wouldn't be able to actually move past the sheet in this case. We'd end up right about there at negative 0.691. But we concluded earlier in the video that we will never have a net electric field equaling zero when we are between the sheet and the charge. So this point, the net electric field will not be zero. And so we want to disregard that point. And therefore, the only answer for part C is the positive 0.691 meters.